أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارع الخلائق أجمعين باعث الأنبياء والمرسلين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق وعز المرسلين حبيبي لا العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المنتجبين سيما بقية الله روحي وأرواح العالمين له الفداء بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم كل وليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا قال الله الحكيم في محكم كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم Muminin and Mu'minat, brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the opportunity to gather and once again benefit from the gatherings and the majalis of remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remembrance of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his progeny gain from that positive energy that we can have amongst each other, gain from that spiritual or spirituality that we can gain when amongst each other. That is not something we can gain through these mediums, online mediums. However, it is definitely better than not having it. At least it is keeping in contact with one another, keeping in touch somehow, and also having some reminders and some remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remembrance of His Messenger and Ahlul Bayt sallallahu wa sallamu alayhim ajma'een. The ayah that I chose to briefly discuss in this uh, short session that inshallah I'll keep it brief is the first ayah of Surat An-Nisa, the chapter named The Woman, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins this chapter with addressing mankind. Ya ayyuhan nas, O people. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ittaqu rabbakum. Be conscious of your duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة. He created you all, the one who created you all from one nafs. The ayah refers to the creation of or the initial crea- creation of Adam على نبينا وآله عليه السلام where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created him and honored him ordered for the malaika to prostrate for him, then he created from the same nafs, from the same source, he created also Hawa. And this is not 
to belittle the status of women, rather to declare and to confirm that they are from the same source. Min wahida wa khalaqa min zawjaha. That the pair or the spouse for the initial nafs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created what was from the same nafs, from the same source. Not that one was created or as you know some suggest men are from uh, Mars or a woman from Venus or whatever. They may suggest none of, uh, not in any, by any means discriminating or belittling the status of women rather to confirm that in fact they were created from the same source. That is the first uh, thing that I want us to reflect on. However, beyond that is the fact that we were all created from that source. He says, مِن نَفْسِ وَاحِدَ وَخَلَقَ مِنْهَا زَوْجَهَا وَبَثَّ مِنْهُمَا رِجَالًا كَثِيرًا وَنِسَاءً That he created from that initial source, the, the one source he created from it, its uh, pair. So now we have two. Then he says in Arabic we have the, uh, the pronoun for the two, for the du, uh, jewel. He says that from the two of them, وَبَثَّ مِنْهُمَا From the two of them, from uh, the, both the, uh, the male and the female, مِنْهُمَا رِجَالًا كَثِيرًا وَنِسَاءً That he created many men and many women from them. Then he says also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues with taqwa. So initially taqwa and again reminder of taqwa, being conscious of our duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one that we call upon, الَّذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ what I want to reflect on briefly, inshallah, is number one, the importance of the realization of the relationship between all mankind. The very close relationship, in fact. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here speaks to nas. Ya ayyuhan nas. Oh people, everyone. In some ayat of the Holy Quran, he addresses men in some ayat he addresses women in some ayat he addresses believers in some ayat he addresses the non-believers in fact ya ayyuhalladhina kafaru or he says to his messenger qul ya ahlal kitabi the people of the book however in this particular ayah he is not addressing any particular group rather all ya ayyuhan nas and here he reminds us of the fact that as a human being, no matter what faith we belong to, we still call upon him. تَسَاعَلُونَ بِهِ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ Be conscious of your duty, be aware of your duty, be dutiful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he says, the one you call upon, <clears throat> in fact, some, some mu'mineen a while ago asked me and I, I explained on the ayah that often is recited and some people call it the ayah of shifa or dua shifa. Uh, it actually is not dua for shifa and it is not an ayah of shifa or it is a proof from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a reminder from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, another, another proof of the Creator. In there, there is a context of ayat that come, or in that context, a series of ayat that come with certain proofs of the Creator, where in one of them he says, Then who is it that created the heavens and the earth? In other words, reflect. Could this beautiful organized uh, universe that we live in with the galaxies and the heavens and the earth as part of this this system could it all have come in a, in a series of accidents and coincidence one after the other 
and this order coming from as they say a chaos or the uh, the, the Big Bang being an explosion if it was not controlled as today science proves that it was definitely uh, there is definitely an intended intelligent designer behind it otherwise it, it could not have come in uh, the way we see it today the beauty that we see today then he says the ayah that people recite, it is about the desperate one. Perhaps this is the relationship or the uh, link between the, the fact that they recite this ayah when there is someone who is sick. And typically it is recited when someone is sick in a situation that doctors have uh, or have little to do or they have little that they can do for him or her. And then they come and say, let's pray for uh, somebody who is sick. And they call uh, or they pray using this particular ayah, which speaks of the muttar, the desperate one. The desperate one will turn to none but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When somebody is has been uh, basically uh, the, uh, given the, uh, the uh, has been given the, a statement of no hope that doctors say there's no hope they have been turned away from uh, m medical treatments there's nothing that we can do for you as doctors there's not nothing that perhaps certain uh, herbal medications or whatever else that they are familiar with in terms of the uh, material means then they turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and may you jibul then who is it that answers the desperate one when he calls upon him and removes the uh, su or the evil or the any kind of difficulty that they're calling for? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fear him and consider your duty to him. You ask him, you ask through him, for your needs, for your hajat, for your desperate times. This, there's no, no one else that we turn to when we are desperate except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, consider your duty to Him and spe specifically in relation to your arham, also your relatives. This is one, of, one way of understanding the ayah. Nonetheless, my focus is, my dear brothers and sisters, is the fact that we are all created from nafsa wahida. We are, we are all very close to one another. We look upon each other and we sometimes we start categorizing from uh, nationalities, races, colors, and so on. When in reality, we are nothing but children of the same parents. We are brothers, distant brothers, and faith, believe in God, believing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, brings us so close to one another. It makes us literally like the brothers and sisters from the one family. We may have our uh, differences and our issues, even with, my, with our own blood brothers and sisters, immediate blood, I say, because ultimately all, all of us, we share the bloodline from Nabiullah Adam ala Nabina wa Ali wa alayhi salam and uh, our mother Hawa or Eve uh, salamullah alayha peace be upon them we share that and we all share many many characteristics our genes are very similar our uh, limbs are very similar and amazingly this in fact situation that we're in the coronavirus that we are uh, all struggling against does not discriminate amongst us. It looks at us all the same. It comes to us regardless of race, regard, regardless of nationality. Earlier today I mentioned that it, it, it needs no ticket, it needs no visas, it comes, it does not knock the door and it does not wait for us to open the door and welcome it or accept it. And it comes to all of us. It has no 
it, it does not see us in the eye that we see one another. This itself should bring us together. This itself should remind us that we are all ultimately human beings, children of Adam and Hawa, and we are closely related, and we affect each other so much that now one issue happens in one corner of the world. Soon after that, the rest of the world is suffering with the same issue. Now you may say today people travel. These things happened in the past. It may have happened slower. Now the, uh, the, the speed in which it spreads due to the, uh, the, the way we travel nowadays, the airplanes and the cars and so on, it, it has traveled a lot faster and it uh, crossed oceans and so on and reminded us of how close we are to one another. Again, we look at each other and we identify. I remember, I was, uh, a while ago, I was watching a doc documentary on one of the wars in some African tribe, between some Af African tribes. And the interesting fact was that the journalist was asking one of the uh, members of one of the tribes, how do you identify each other when you fight, when you come uh, to a certain uh, area or something and you find or in the city and you attack how do you identify each other because there were attacks uh, that looked very random uh, but it was not because they identified each other so the question was how do you identify each other is it the dress code is it they said no it's the looks and interestingly the journal journalist was well i don't see any difference between your tribe and their tribe and so the uh, that uh, member of that tribe was explaining how certain features of the face or the nose are uh, different in a way that they could only see it themselves being uh, you know members of that tribe they could see that when uh, in actual fact the journalist who lived there and was uh, traveling there could not see that difference unfortunately we see certain differences and we set certain borders for each other, including borders of faith, in fact, that make us feel more privileged to be, uh, or make us feel that we have more of a right. And it, you know, we, uh, God has uh, uh, perhaps favored us rather than others, and we have more of a right to exist rather than others, and so on. When Islam and no religion, in fact, teaches us that. Islam, in fact, teaches us that one who is a believer and who believes in God sees all as children of God, sees all as ayalullah, al khalqu ayalullah. In the hadith, we are told, khalq, all the creatures. And if we, if we look at the hadith as, you know, talking about humans, we say, okay, all humans. If not all of the creatures, but in this specific scenario, we say, okay, all of humans. They are all like the family of God, the children, you know, wife and children. Not in a physical sense, of course. We don't believe that a physical relationship could be uh, there between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He created all. In the dua that we recite in dua, the month of Rajab that we are in, that the difference between you and your very special uh, servants, the special ones that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appointed for his message, appointed for the imamah, the khilafah of the messenger of Islam, sallallahu alayhi, even for them, and they them being appointed and given certain rights by Allah, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, However, the difference, the main difference and the major difference is they are khalquk. They are cre your creatures. You have created them. No, none. And this is, in fact, the main uh, difference we have with our Christian brothers. The fact that we do uh, uh, consider Isa, alayhi salam, Jesus peace, Jesus, peace be upon him, as a special uh, servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who was referred to in the Holy Quran as Kalima. Kalima is a very special thing that he is a, 
an order or a word from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he created him without uh, having a father, a miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even his birth or the uh, his conception and uh, eventually his birth was also miraculous. The whole scenario that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose. However, we do not consider him to be a son of God in the physical sense. No, he's a special servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And ultimately, we are all the children of God, not in a physical sense. If we look at each other in that way, the hadith says the most beloved ones in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the, those who are the most beneficial to his ayal, to his family, to his people, to his children. So the, amongst us, those who are most beneficial, not God forbid the opposite, who bring harm to humanity or who bring wars, who bring uh, nothing but chaos in the human society and so on, those are definitely not representing uh, Islam or representing the, this, the, uh, the school that the Prophet and Ahlul Bayt sallallahu alayhi wa have uh, brought for humanity. They are not representing the Khilafa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being representatives and vicegerents of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants for us to be serving humanity, to be helping other members of this human family that he considers all, all of them to be ayalullah, all of them to be his special ones. He created them out of love. He created them out of mercy. He did not create them out of wrath or anger, and he did not create evil either. You know, some people think that God creates created some uh, with evil in them, you know, as part of their... No, there's no uh, such faith within Islam. It does not fit. In fact, in Islam, we believe everyone is born innocent and pure, and circumstances, environment may lead them in a certain direction, and we have a duty... This is the second point I want to share, that we are a mem members of a family. We have a duty towards other members of this family, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Other people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also created out of his love, out of his mercy, created them. And he, he distri distributed amongst us certain things as part of the test and trial. Some were given wealth, some poverty. Some were given, in fact, knowledge and the opportunity to gain knowledge, and some were not given that opportunity. So you may say, well, people choose for themselves to seek knowledge or not to seek knowledge. To a certain degree, that may be correct, but that's not always 100% accurate. Some people are given those opportunities by being born in certain families. And you look at it from different, uh, basically in different fields, not only um, in perhaps the religious fields or, you know, Islamic knowledge. If you look at it from uh, another perspective or, you know, in terms of the scientists and, med uh, you know, medical field or uh, other fields, engineers and so on, children of those people have more of a chance of not it doesn't always happen but they do have more of a chance and more opportunities people in certain countries definitely have more opportunities than other countries similarly in terms of theology in terms of islamic uh, knowledge and uh, teachings the availability of it and so on all of these things have been given by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way that if we look at it in, uh, with our limited uh, sight and limited vision, we may think God has discriminated. You know, why is he given some health and some sickness, some wealth and some poverty? Why is he given some the opportunity of having uh, perhaps knowledge and gaining knowledge and having the access to knowledge and some have not been given that? And again, some of us may not understand. However, if we look at it from the point of view of all of these things, whatever is given in this world being a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it's easier to understand. Because again, this dunya, this world 
that we're living in is not the final abode. This world that we're living in is only a pla the, the, the you know the the the, the uh, uh, say the soccer field where you play the game in order to see who wins and who loses. This is just an example. This dunya is the place of testing. Daru bada. It is a, the home of testing. Imagine you go and uh, you're playing for a, uh, for the uh, World Cup and you you get on the uh, field. You're not going to live on the field forever. Nobody starts building their home on the field. Nobody starts having all their dreams that this is... No, this is only a place that we use in order to, uh, you know, play a game and... Uh, show who is who's got more skills and who is more capable and who ultimately wins. Nonetheless, in the uh, in these games, there's a major difference because again, it's limited. One world, uh, one gold, uh, you know, world cup or one gold medal. Uh, whereas in the uh, competition, in the nearness to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, in the spiritual realm. There is no, there are no limits. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has no limits in terms of His giving and the uh, mercy that He has upon us and the rewards in the hereafter. They have no limits. Therefore, if we look at this world being a testing plane, a place of testing, a, pl a place of trials, we will not question why did Allah Subhanahu wa Taala give me difficulty why did he give me sickness why did he give me poverty why is this disease spreading some even ask a question why is it spreading in certain religious cities you know the city of Qom and so on why is it happening there certain people have gone as far as questioning the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala questioning God or questioning the faith of the people that you believe that these places are blessed and holy how come now they could become a, a, a place where they spread the disease further because people come for, to visit from different parts of the world and so on. All of these uh, comments or these accusations are stemming from ignorance because again, this world is a place of test. These places are holy and blessed. People who go to them, it is not going to stop a physical and material disease from happening to them if it is there. Some people were, uh, in fact, faced uh, killing. In fact, we know of the, the famous narrations as it comes closer to the month of Muharram. Often we remember that Imam Hussein salam departed Mecca. He went from Medina initially to Mecca and then he departed Mecca in order to go to uh, Kufa or two uh, eventually when he was stopped in Karbala. So he departed Mecca in the month of the Hijjah and when he did depart uh, Mecca in the month of the uh, Hijjah it was because he the order has had been given by the cursed Yazid that even if he is holding into the curtain of Kaaba you still have to either get the bay'ah from him or you kill him referring to Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Therefore, the Imam uh, departed the city of Mecca. It did not uh, mean safety. It did not mean that, okay, I'm in Mecca, nothing can happen to me, swords cannot affect me, or a disease cannot affect me for that matter. It could. It does not mean that these places are not holy because their purpose is to give us the spiritual purification. That is the most important thing. In fact, it is a very uh, sad situation that many people associate our visit to these places as simply a worldly thing. That we go there because I have a disease, I want cure for it. I go there because I don't have children and I'm asking for children. I go there because my business is not doing well and I want to ask you may get shafa'a and you may get answer for these things and you may very well get cure for diseases. People did get cure from major diseases, but this is not the purpose of these places. These places are most importantly 
for and most significantly intended Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the messenger to guide us. Ahlul Bayt are for guidance. His family, his progeny are for guidance. These places are meant and intended for spiritual cleansing and purification. They are meant for further guidance in our journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore, if he decides that as part of that journey that one gets cure, it may very well happen. If he decides that one goes through certain physical uh, diseases or problems and struggles in order to purify spiritually, in order to get closer to him. In fact, Jabir ibn Abdullah al-Ansari, and I'll finish with this uh, story, Imam Baqir salam, he visited Jabir ibn Abdullah al-Ansari. He was much older. You know, the Jabir was an, a companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he was one who was very close to his family, the family of Rasulullah, to the daughter of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He narrates from her, we have the hadith known as Hadith al kisa that was narrated by him from the daughter of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was very close to them, a lover of the family, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi had promised him that uh, you will meet from my children, a grandson or great-grandson of mine, whose name is like mine, and he will be the one who dissects knowledge, referring to Imam Muhammad al-Baqir alayhi afdalu salawat wa tahiyyat. And then he says to him, when you meet him, do give him my salam. You know, aqra'uhu min salam So Jabir lived until then, and at the, during the life of Imam Baqir alayhi salam, he uh, departed this world. When he uh, was sick, unwell, and the Imam visited him, Imam Baqir asked him, you know, how are you? What state are you in? Kayfa asbahd? He says, I have become in such a state, or I am, I have, and the Imam was asking him, not of his physical health, obviously, because he can see how he is, doing physically um, and definitely the uh, b beyond in fact uh, you may say well pain and so on he cannot see yeah he can see the state and he's not asking for the uh, for uh, the patient or for the uh, for Jabir for the companion of Rasulullah to be complaining rather he's asking him of something that he in fact understood and responded accordingly Jabir, when he heard the question, he responded. He says, now I have become in such a state, Ya Rasulullah, or son of the Prophet of Allah. I am now in a state where I prefer uh, the old age over youth. I prefer sickness over health. I prefer poverty over wealth. And all of those, obviously, is because he sees how one through poverty often remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, poverty could lead to some being impatient and as part of their test is to be patient and not to question the decree and the dividing of the sustenance by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, he says, I prefer that because typically, again, people uh, do remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more through poverty than they do when they are well off. When they're in difficulty, they keep on asking. When they have uh, to, you know, the, try and live day by day and make ends meet on a daily basis, they ask. Whereas when they are doing very well, oftentimes they forget. Um, another time is when people are sick. Oftentimes when they're sick, in situations like what we have now, People are more uh, inclined to call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They see, now some obviously as they're trying to prevent it uh, before it has come so close to them, before they realize it's not in our control uh, so much. Yes, we have, we play a part as much as we can, but ultimately Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who uh, brings it if he intends it for us as part of our test. And he cures us if he intends the cure for us 
as part of his mercy, the mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, uh, people often, when they are unwell, they turn to him, they ask him, they, especially when they are desperate, when it's something that it is not in their control at all, when, they, when it comes out of, out of control like this one, doctors are saying there's no cure for it that we're familiar with, there is no uh, vaccine for it, there's no remedy. Um, all what we can do is perhaps tell people to uh, uh, wash hands, prevent, and if it does happen, you know, boost your immunity and so on, which are all means, uh, could be correct, could be a way of uh, some of the things that they suggest. Uh, nonetheless, we try at the same time we recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the Shafi and he says old age because often when we are older we realize we're closer again as days pass and we get weaker and you know bones aching and so on we start realizing that we are uh, counting uh, it's only a matter of days or years we're counting them and it is uh, going to come to an end therefore again people uh, their um, fitra awakens their instinct awakens their faith and belief in what will happen after death and therefore they are closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nonetheless Imam Baqir alayhi salam and I'll finish with this hadith he says as for us Ahlul Bayt he says this is beautiful the state that you're in it's good however for us Ahlul Bayt we are pleased with whatever and we prefer whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prefers for us. As the poet in Farsi puts it, he says, uh, one prefers yaki dardo, yaki darman pasandat. Some prefer the sickness, some prefer cure, some prefer closeness, some prefer being far from their beloved. I prefer out of all of these circumstances, I prefer the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prefers for me. Inshallah, we are amongst those who are pleased and have the maqam of rida, pleasure, in all circumstances, regardless of what we are going through, poverty or wealth, health or sickness, anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests us through, we are pleased and we are thankful to Him for allowing us or giving us the guidance to sail through these uh, tribulations in life, trials in life, and perhaps eventually uh, land or arrive at, at the time of our death, arrive at a situation where we are pure and ready to meet our Lord. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us during these times to focus on our relationship with Him on our relationship with him in the hereafter, not just for worldly things that as soon as this, uh, inshallah, this uh, calamity or this trial uh, passes, as soon as, as, as it passes, some people will forget. Unfortunately, inshallah, we're not amongst them. We strengthen our relationship with him in a lasting, long-lasting manner. We ask him to make us amongst those who listen to what's said and follow what's best. الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين